David F., I'm going to find you and I'm going to marry you. Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Joko Bak, I'm your host, and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. This is Cyclop by Sugar Bites. It's supposed to be a one-eyed giant, but it's not. It's one of the sickest bass. <clears throat> it's one of the sickest bass synthesizers ever. So I'm gonna show you how you can dominate Cyclop using MIDI controllers, knobs in particular. Okay, so a lot of elements in here can be controlled using MIDI CC, but there's one thing you need to know before you even start mapping out stuff. The MIDI mappings are tied to the preset. So if you're working inside one preset and you save that after mapping your controllers, then those mappings are only tied to that particular preset. So if you decide to grab Cyclop and you want to map your stuff, but you want to keep your mappings for all your future presets, then I recommend that you make an initialized preset from the start, map your controllers into that, save it, and then use that one as a template for your future presets. Now there are initialized presets within Cyclops and the easiest way to find them is by using this field right here. And then you have tabs up here. So make sure you're in this one, the user one, and then look for sugar bites. And it's right there at the top and you'll get all of the sugar bite presets. Then just scroll down into the list until you find initialized. And here they are. I'm gonna select the saw regiment and then just close the preset list. Cyclops has support for USB MIDI devices connected over USB cables with a lightning connector and also support for Bluetooth MIDI. And if you've got a Bluetooth MIDI controller like I've got right here, then just go to the settings menu, press this arrow right here, and then go to the MIDI menu. MIDI, MIDI, MIDI. And here you can find the Bluetooth MIDI devices. Oh, and if you've got your device connected via a USB cable, then you'll find your device in this list too. Okay, so we've got an initialized preset. We've got our controllers connected. Let's make sure that we save our own preset. So we press the floppy disk icon. Make sure that you change the author name. Press OK. Now we can press the floppy icon and it will ask us for a preset name. Nano Key MIDI Map. Press OK and there it's saved. All right, so since Cyclops has MIDI Learn, all we need to do from this point on is to Long press on a controller until this pops up. Press MIDI Learn and tweak a controller. And there we are. And then just keep doing this until you've got whatever you want to map mapped out. Now, if you own a Korg Nano Key, then you've got several scenes, up to eight scenes with eight different controller configurations. Right now, I'm in scene one. And if I hold down scene and press this pad here, I'm in scene eight. And now I can continue assigning controllers like that. The cool thing with Cyclops is that you can have two elements on the same control. So let's say I want to control the cutoff for both filters at the same time. I simply long press here, press me learn and use the same knob. And now I'm controlling both knobs. If you want to clear a control, just long press and press clear and you've removed that control. Now, when you're done mapping out stuff, simply go to the floppy disk icon again, press the save and press OK. So just keep saving over that preset you made in order to keep all of the mappings you make. Right, so the reason why I told you to change the author name is so that you can find your own presets easier. You just go to the user menu and you'll find your usernames as its own category in this menu. Does anyone get that? Yeah. Just keep adding controllers and in no time you'll be able to dominate Cyclops with knobs. I've put an app link down in the description so you can go grab Cyclops for yourself. I do recommend this synthesizer to all bass heads out there, people doing bass music, dubstep, garage, drum and bass, stuff like that, or even industrial beats where you need some screamy distorted sounds. It's got quite a list of distortion modules in here and they all sound awesome. I'm gonna make a full review of this synthesizer at one point or another. I couldn't do that before because I was only using an iPad 
iPad mini. You try it yourself. It's not easy reaching these ones on a mini. I mean, a mini is like this big and you can imagine how small these buttons get. But on the iPad Pro, it's awesome. Go grab it from the app link down below in the description. By the way, have you seen this? I'm powering the Korg Nano Key Studio with a um, USB battery and then I'm running it on wireless. Yeah, I didn't know you could do that. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> Now, if you feel helped by this video, you want to see more like this, then why not sign up on Patreon? Now, if Patreon isn't your cup of tea, then I've also got a PayPal me link so you could do a one-off donation if you'd rather do that. If you don't want to do Patreon or PayPal, then you can always share my videos Press the thumbs up because that really helps with the ratings around here. And if you subscribe, don't forget to press that little bell thing because that way you'll always be notified whenever I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it.